We just got off our very first Royal Caribbean cruise, and in today's video, as promised, we're going over some of the key differences that I noticed between Disney Cruise Line and Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. For reference, I have been on all the Disney cruise ships, but I've only been on one Royal Caribbean cruise. That being said, even before I get the video started, I do want to tell you I'm looking forward to more Royal Caribbean cruises. That's how much I enjoyed it. But which one offers you the most advantages for you? We're going to dive into all those details today. Day. Let's start off with the size of the different fleets. Royal Caribbean is a much larger fleet than the Disney Cruise Line. At the time of filming, the Disney Cruise Line has four ships with a fifth just about ready to come out. The Royal Caribbean, uh, by comparison, has 25 ships with more coming out just about every year for a while, including their most recent addition, the Wonder of the Seas, which is recently named the largest cruise ship ever to set sail on the Seven Seas. The differences in the Royal Caribbean cruise ship size versus the Disney cruise ship size also varies quite a bit. On the Royal Caribbean cruise, the smallest ship that you can find is about 1,600 people, with some of the larger ones, like the Wonder of the Seas, housing almost 5,500 people. That is far more than any of the Disney cruise ships can take, with the maximum on the dream and fantasy at the time of filming of 2,500 guests. This is where you can find one of the bigger differences between Royal Caribbean and Disney, the larger ships and the smaller ships, but also the age of the ships. Royal Caribbean has been around for a lot longer than the Disney Cruise Line, not Disney the company, but the Disney Cruise Line. And because of that, some of their older ships I have heard, and remember I've only been on Independence of the Seas, do feel a bit older. So if you go on one of the newer ships, you're going to get a newer feel. Some of the older ones, maybe it's going to feel a little bit older to you. Size does have its advantages though. With 25 plus ships, Royal Caribbean has the opportunity to go to more places than the Disney Cruise Line does. Just because Disney does do Europe with one of their ships doesn't mean that they're out there all the time. Royal Caribbean, however, has a ship in Europe just about every time of the year. That includes other destinations like Hawaii. Disney tries to go to Hawaii every couple years, but the reality is they can't go there all the time because they only have, again, four and about to have five ships. Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, goes to Hawaii all the time. In terms of staterooms, both Royal Caribbean and Disney share a very similar category structure. Some inside, ocean view, veranda, and concierge rooms. There are, of course, more options on Royal Caribbean because they have more ships, of course. However, you'll find similar amenities on both. One of the things that I noticed between our Independence of the Seas veranda was that it felt just a little bit smaller. I decided to look into the details and found out that the veranda, the similar, you know, if you're comparing oranges to oranges here, between Royal Caribbean and Disney, that veranda room is about 50 square feet smaller on Independence of the Seas than it is on Disney. Is it a huge difference? No, but it's noticeable. One of the biggest differences between Disney and Royal Caribbean is the dining options. Yes, Royal Caribbean has a tremendous number of different dining options, but a vast majority of them are not included with the price of your cruise. The main dining room is, which is nice and has great appeal throughout. You can see there's actually three decks for the main dining on Royal Caribbean, but if you're looking for more of a flair, so I've been told, you want to go to one of those exclusive dining experiences, which could include maybe the Chop House or maybe even Hibachi. They do have that on board many of the Royal Caribbean cruise ships. By comparison, Disney Cruise Line has three different dining venues at the time of filming that you get to experience throughout your cruise, and you move from location to location. So one of the things that I noticed was that we were going back to the same dining room every night. That probably doesn't mean a lot for those who haven't sailed a lot. However, when you're there and you're experiencing it, you say to yourself, oh, okay, we're back here again, and it all kind of feels very similar. It's just one of the big differences that I noticed between Royal and Disney. The food itself is also a big point of comparison. Disney food, by and large, is better than Royal Caribbean cruise food. There's no question about it. However, there were one, two, maybe even three standout items on the Royal Caribbean cruise ship that we had, which were included with the price of our cruise, which really compared with many of the best Disney items that you can find on board. That being said, if you're looking for food quality overall, this is an easy win for Disney. One of the items that I was told about before I got on board the Royal Caribbean cruise ship was that they tend to nickel and dime you a bit more than the Disney cruise ship. Now that basically means that you have to pay more for the individual things that you may find included on board the Disney ship. I was honestly expecting to be feeling that a bit more than I did. I was able to go on the flow rider, the rock climbing wall, go ice 
ice skating, all these things were included with my cruise, including the pizza Sorrentos and even more. So there were a lot of things that were actually included with the cruise, which I didn't expect and was happily surprised. That being said, you do feel it just a little bit more on the Royal Caribbean cruise ships. You can go on and try most of the things, but something like the escape room as an example would not be included with the price of your cruise. Now they don't have an escape room on a Disney cruise line, but you get the idea. There are some big differences between the two in terms of individual costs. Since we're on that topic though, I do wanna talk about costs because this is a huge deciding factor for a lot of families who wanna go on vacation. Now, if you just look on the Disney Cruise Line website and you just happen to you know, come across a few cruise ships, you see maybe a three night adventure. It can cost anywhere upwards of $2,000 for a three night adventure for two people in one cabin. By comparison, on the Wonder of the Seas, the latest and greatest Royal Caribbean cruise, a seven night adventure for two people in one cabin, veranda, would cost $2,000. That's quite a difference between the two. A three night veranda adventure on the Disney Cruise Line or a seven night on the Royal Caribbean Wonder of the Seas, the latest and greatest, costing the same amount of money. As I was looking through the prices, I found that this was relatively common. You found that Royal Caribbean was anywhere between a third and sometimes even a quarter of the price that you can get a Disney Cruise for. And the big question that I had to ask myself at the end of the cruise, is Royal only giving you a third or a quarter of the fun that you find on board a Disney Cruise Line? The answer, very easy, no. I didn't feel like I was only getting a third of the fun for the cost, which to me was a little bit shocking because it felt like I was getting a really good opportunity to go out there, experience the Caribbean, have a wonderful time, relax, really enjoy some of those special amenities and only pay about a third of the cost. That is a huge advantage for Royal Caribbean and speaks volumes to what they can do with the larger number of ships. That being said, there is a feeling of luxury that you find on the Disney Cruise Line that you don't necessarily find right away on the Royal Caribbean cruise ship. This is something that I noticed right away. From walking on board, you know, they usually announce your name as you step on board a Disney cruise ship. With Royal, they don't have time for that, right? They've got to get everybody on board as fast as possible and make their way. And throughout the entire adventure, it just had a different feel. Not a worse feel, not a negative feel, just a different feel than you find with Disney Cruise Line. A little less of the luxury, the, the really elegant feel that you feel on Disney Cruise Line. Instead, it was just a, a cruise vacation. Don't take away from that, it was still great, but different. Now, in terms of entertainment, we saw a live comedian, and I have seen some video of Greece, even though I didn't have the opportunity to see it when I was on board. I have heard, and I totally believe, that Disney beats Royal hands down in terms of onboard entertainment. That is, for the class of ship I was on. The very special Oasis class ships, like the Wonder of the Seas, have a special water stage area at the back of the ship, which I've heard is outstanding. That being said, I believe Disney probably has it in between the two when it comes to the shows and entertainment that you find on the stage. That being said, the comedian that I saw on board the Independence of the Seas was truly one of the best I have seen on board a cruise ship in total. So really impressed with the live performer. When it comes to music on board, Disney's got a very similar collection of songs they play throughout the ship, which really make you feel magical. You feel the Disney tunes. On Royal, there was a ton of 80s and disco, and I loved it all, I gotta tell you. All of it was a lot of fun. There's uh, a lot of music throughout the ship, but it's just a great, lively feeling throughout the whole thing. Another big difference that I noticed between Royal and Disney was the movie theater. I know that seems surprising to some, but seeing a movie at sea, especially a first-run Disney movie, is a ton of fun. It's something that I've, I've really come to love on board, especially when there's a movie I really want to see and it just came out and Disney's got it on board one of their cruise ships. It makes for a magical adventure. Royal didn't have that, that's true, and it's something that I, I kind of was thinking about when I was on board. Thinking about the fun activities to do on board, this was another huge difference between Royal Caribbean and the Disney Cruise Line. Royal Caribbean does have some kids' areas, and although we didn't get a chance to see it, from what I've heard, they're not quite as intense as what you can find on board the Disney Cruise Line. Of course, Disney has that eye on kids and families on board, and I've got to tell you, their activity centers and things to do for kids are far better than the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. That being said, it's really gonna depend on the age of your kids because when I was younger, I loved all things Disney, no question about it. And thinking about it, I would love the Disney Cruise Line at that age, but maybe it's not for every single child. Maybe there are some who would actually prefer to go rock climbing or be on the flow rider or ice skating 
on board a ship. Maybe that's an age group that applies to your family. And if it does, it's something to really think about because I really do feel like a different audience is interested in the different activities. Maybe Disney's got these activities that are fun for younger kids, maybe early tweens, but as they get even older, maybe the kids want to do something else like get on that flow rider. I've got to say the flow rider honestly was one of my favorite adventures on board the Royal Caribbean cruise ship. It's actually a motivating factor that makes me want to go again and again on board the Royal Caribbean cruise ship just to get better at that skill. I know it's just one thing to do on board, but it is a ton of fun. And you can find flow rider apparently on land as well, but there's something special about a wave simulator at sea. Now in terms of shopping, I noticed another huge difference here. When I was on board the Royal Caribbean cruise ship, I was expecting to find tons of Royal Caribbean cruise merchandise, but you know, I didn't. I found a little bit, but then I went around and found a lot of other shops with a lot of other items. That is very different what you find on the Disney Cruise Line. Disney really does know how to do merchandise well, and when you're on board, you find tons of it. Another huge difference between the two. But if you're looking for more of the kind of mall, indoor mall experience on board, you will find a lot of cool items on board the Royal Caribbean Cruises. Another huge difference between these cruise lines is their private island destination. We went to Coco Cay, and I've been to Castaway Key many times. Both are spectacular. I gotta tell you right now, they are both a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to stepping back on land at both of these two islands, no question about it. That being said, they are extremely different. Royal Caribbean's got the Thrillwater Park, zip lines, the balloon that goes up in the air, and tons of excursions that you can find on the island. They've also got lots and lots of beaches They've really renovated the entire island so that two colossal sized ships can be docked there at the same time and guests can really enjoy a private island experience. That being said, it's very different than Castaway Key. Castaway Key feels so much more private, so much more enclosed, like you are just there on your private piece of paradise, it's you and just a couple friends, versus Coco Cay, which really felt like you were there with a lot of other people. Even though we weren't, there was just so much space for people to go all over the place. So there's been a lot of thinking between the two. Both of them are great. There's no question about it. I would recommend both of them. More of the luxury feel, I would go to Castaway Key. More of the fun excursions and just beach time, I would go to Coco Cay. It's just my opinion. The biggest deciding factor when you're thinking about which one is better for you, and I know it has to do with more than just the private island, it has to do with the uh, cruise line itself, but if you're thinking about just Coco Cay or Castaway Key, it comes down to what you wanna do when you're there. Both of them have beaches, both of them have snorkeling, all those adventures that we know and love, jet ski tours, all of that. But if you're looking for that thrill water park, right? You got, you got someone in your family who really wants to go on those slides, and I've gotta tell you, they are a ton of fun or maybe you have someone in your family who really wants that Disney Castaway Key 5K you know, little medal, or maybe wants to do a Stingray adventure on the island. That's when you choose Castaway Key. They both have unique advantages. After going on this Royal Caribbean cruise, I've gotta tell you, my eyes have been open to all sorts of cruise adventures that we can go on in the future, and I'm looking forward to in the future, including different lines to try, being able to compare all of them to each other. I have a feeling it's going to be a ton of fun. But between Royal and Disney, I think there's a lot to think about. If you're looking at the overall experience, you're gonna have a great time on either of these cruise ships, especially the newer ones for Royal Caribbean, at least from what I've heard. If you have younger ones in your traveling party, you may lean more towards Disney. If you're looking for more of those fun, more adult-ish activities, like the flow rider and rock climbing, then I think Royal may be your best bet. But overall, it does come down to your experience and I think the price. The price plays in to a huge factor here. I think that for that third of a price or even quarter of a price that you can find with Royal Caribbean, if you're hesitating on it, you're thinking about it, and you're saying that's such a good deal compared to what I can get elsewhere, it really is worth a try. It's gotta be one of the newer cruise ships in my opinion or a recently renovated one, but it is definitely not only a third of the fun, you still get a ton of fun for a non-Disney cruise. I honestly do enjoy both of these cruise ships. I'm looking forward to being back on Royal and back on Disney. Between the two, my personal favorite probably doesn't surprise you, it's Disney. For me, I love that kind of luxury experience, seeing the characters and just having a more relaxing time. There's, there's less people, you get the opportunity to enjoy some of your favorite food on board. For me, I do choose Disney between the two, but I am looking forward to getting back on Royal Caribbean. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts between the two. Have you been on Royal and Disney? Do you have a thought between the two? Or maybe you've only been on one and you're debating the other. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Love to hear from you. Thanks so much for being a part of the magic with me today and a very special thank you to our patrons for making it all possible. Until next time, have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.